Yeah. Now, I mean, you've you've you, you've mapped it pretty well here, but could you sort of walk me through some of these attack vectors? I mean, are, are people are journalists mostly getting these on their phone through their Facebook through their their laptops? Like, is it a, a combination? Is there any particular uh, uh, pattern that you can see? Uh, I think it, it is fairly mixed. I mean, email being the most common, right? Email okay. in which you could get anywhere, right? Email, mm-hmm. I think, is the most common. Anytime you're in, but I would say increasingly any of your SaaS applications or communications are going to be looked at, right? Or are going to mm-hmm. be attempted in the password. I mean, I, 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 the most common and the consistent, and this is true with so many of the, the cybersecurity, is going to be email. It's an, it's an easy route. Your email address is being put out there almost at the bottom of your byline or at your yeah. website. Contact me. I mean, it's there's everywhere. A, mm-hmm. an open invitation. But that one, that one I, I almost want the journalists to make sure that they're viewing that almost as a spam folder, right? And not mm-hmm. as like their trusted asset. It almost mm-hmm. have phases, right? Right. Okay. You you emailed into this. I'm now going to move you into something that is more secure. Or I'm going to move you into something that has more security for me yes. over time. But it usually involves clicking on a link or taking to a website that then might look very much like, oh, I just need to log back into my my yeah. Microsoft uh, Outlook account. Right. And it looks, I don't, I mean, the number of times we've seen the the pristine looking website. I mean, I think. Mm-hmm. People almost have a dated, a pre, uh, you know, thought of like, well, it's going to be a website filled with spelling errors or yeah, context yeah. errors. It's like, you know, HTML 1.0. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Uh-huh. The, that that that. If you have that, oh, then you, have, you, you have, have yeah. you have a bottom feeder because I mean, but you also have some that are going to be very specific. You know, check that yeah. URL, reroute, go to the actual website. You know, type in the URL that is correct to get to it, mm-hmm. right? Because they're really doing a dual thing, right? One, they're account harvesting to to use them and and then use that password against all your other accounts. Mm-hmm. They're brute forcing, right? They're just throwing tons of accounts, tons of email. Uh, passwords at your mm-hmm. at your account you know so using the you know that you know, classic personal cyber hygiene of complex and long uh, long passwords using you know i don't i think using a password vault uh you know where you have those complex and you're not trying to remember anything mm-hmm. you know i think that is a, a growing best practice yeah and, and certainly in multi-factor authentication right you should have that on on everything uh, if you don't, or if somebody that you're any, interacting with doesn't, you know, th- th- you need to heighten your security because mm. you're interacting with someone that isn't isn't as high as you you would like it. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec Skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than one thousand dollars worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com slash challenge and start your challenge right now.